to day two of Northumbrian Waters Innovation Festival 2019. It wouldn't be a water festival without a bit of water from the sky though, would it? Well, we've got our brollies, <laughs> thankfully. Let's have a quick recap when things were a bit sunnier on day one. Day one's really key, get the input from the people. It's the kind of creativity that everyone's feeling free to express, you know. It's so exciting to see so many different people coming on site. It's our third innovation festival and every year it gets bigger. Lots of fun and motivation. I'm absolutely blown away with the creativity and what has been going on. There is about a 10 million post-it notes all over the place. A superb start to the week there for day one, but it is day two now and the fun and games continue. Absolutely, and the teams are really going to delve into solving some of the biggest problems in the world. Let's go and have a look at some of the solutions they're starting to come up with. What this festival does for us as an organisation in a massive way is breaks us out of our bubble. It exposes us to new influences, it exposes us to new ways of thinking. Well, it wouldn't be a festival without a little bit of drizzly rain, but it's day two of the Innovation Festival and Angela McCosket joins me now. How are you feeling going into the new day? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Yesterday was absolutely brilliant. The sun was shining. We were absolutely packed with people, everybody getting involved with the, setting up what their problems are, understanding what their design sprints are all about. People were really getting to understand what problem they're trying to tackle today and really hone in on what that piece of the problem is that they're actually wanting to solve this week. We've got Fab Lab from Sunday University with us and they're going to be helping us prototype so to actually bring some of the ideas that we're having to life so they've got 3d printers and all sorts of kit okay. you weigh the same as a warthog <laughs> we are now up here at the main stage and I'm joined now by Neil Malarkey Neil hello we are on a very comfy sofa. We are, it is a very comfy sofa. Hello. I could just, I could just lie here for the rest of the day, actually. This is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like to do that, but I've got work to do. <laughs> I've got to make sure this thing goes properly. What, what are you up to today? What work are you doing? Well, I just did a talk about creativity, innovation, collaboration. Innovation sounds good, sounds exciting, sounds sexy, sounds scary because it sounds big. But <laughs> sometimes innovation may be just a small thing, maybe just tweaking something. For example, I heard yesterday that they worked out an algorithm to find out how to help people who might be in water poverty, maybe struggling to pay their bill. And so you can sort of predict things that will, will help to identify those people, work out how to help them. That's innovation. It isn't a great big shiny spaceship. It's something that really affects people's lives. We're focusing on students. So uh, we've all been a student before at some point in our lives. Uh, we're skint or we're either living in a multi-dwelling unit, what they call it, so we're five other people who we don't know or we do know as well. Um, and so the scenario that we're trying to fix here is how do we improve the experience of students who need to move home? Um, how do we distribute the money out evenly back to the students who, who live there as well? How do we personalise that experience for them as well? So uh, they're treated as an individual and as a student who is skint or probably needs that money back as well so they can get the trip to Bay at the end of the year. We'll design it, we'll design the persona, we'll build empathy for them as well to understand their struggle uh, going through the homey process. Then we'll test those ideas later as well with some of the uh, typical customers. So I am here with Jeremy, or Jazz as he likes to be called, because I'm not your mum. So <laughs> can you tell us what's happening here in this tent? Yeah, this week we're looking at 5G, super powering a smart grid, um, and we're in the middle of our day two. And day two we're actually ideating, so we've done a bit of a brain dump of ideas this morning. And now we're actually taking them from that, that side of the hill of ideas to this side of the hill of ideas where most people don't know go and explore. The next stage is now their brain is just brimming with lots of ideas. We will take them to that next level where they can get all those ideas out on paper. So instead of just coming up with 10 or 20, hopefully each one will come up with 30 or 40, maybe even 50 wow. ideas. So I am here with Pam. We're in Plant Buddy and this is day one of that. So Pam, how's it going so far? Oh, fantastic. The level of enthusiasm and thinking outside the box and thinking about our future in a different way. And that's kind of what we've been talking about here. How do we produce a good future by using less water and by using technology in a different way? So I'm really looking forward to day three. Today we're uh, on the second day of a sprint to develop an app that uh, help the Northumbrian water drivers. It's all about uh, how can improve the mental and physical health of the driver, 
How can we ensure that the, the, uh, the vehicles don't leave the, the depot when they're, uh, when they're overweight? And how basically the, the driver can better interact and use that cabin space um, as a working environment. We've got six teams working uh, around the room to actually come up with a variety of solutions that they'll then test against one another, um, refine those, iterate throughout the day, and hopefully by the end of the day we'll be able to go away with a, an app that we can start testing on uh, some actual drivers for Northumbrian Water. Well, it's the end of day two. It's nice to see that we haven't been too drenched with uh, with this summer showers, have we? No, not too bad. It is a shame that the sun has left us, but still, the energy is high at the festival. Has some good progress been made then? We're on day two now. Time's ticking on, I suppose. Time is ticking on, and I know that uh, the, the sprint tents are in a desperate kind of, like, frenzy. So what happens on day three now, then? If people are feeling a bit tired, but they'll go home, have a rest, and think, you know, bright-eyed tomorrow. Usually by the end of Wednesday there is a breakthrough so everybody goes home kind of thinking yes we've kind of got something now that we really really want to home in on and bring to life and really bring to fruition. Those light bulb moments. Absolutely so tomorrow we should see them pinging out all over the festival. And that is the end of day two. Tomorrow, day three, will mark decision time for the teams. It will indeed. The teams will be developing their best and most innovative ideas so far. To tackle some of the biggest environmental and social issues. We'll see you back here tomorrow.